The Russian Volleyball Super League is arguably the most demanding in terms of player height for those participating in the tournament. There were seasons where not a single player under 180 cm was in the team lineup, even for the libero position. But this season, the Russian Championship was shaken up by the emergence of a player just 182 cm tall. And he didn't just show up, he started to shine. If you haven't guessed yet, today we're talking about the Russian outside hitter Andrei Marchenko, a player breaking stereotypes. As usual, in our Play Like a Pro segment, we'll not only run through the player's biography, but also analyze the game of our episode's hero. So let's not drag this out any longer. Let's go! Andrei Marchenko was born on November 27, 1997, in the Russian village of Chernigovka, located in Primorsky Krai, with a population hovering around 10,000 people. Despite being in Russia, he didn't plan to pursue volleyball because he was mostly interested in football. However, volleyball was not indifferent to him. His father played the sport at an amateur level and often took his son to games. That's where Andrei's love for this fantastic sport began. So if Marchenko was born in Russia, how did he end up in Belarus? Andrei's parents retired quite early, as his mom was in the military and his dad was a policeman. After reaching the age of 45, the Marchenko family moved to Gomel, closer to the father's relatives. Andrei was 12 years old at the time. With one question settled, how did Marchenko then get into volleyball? As an 8th grader, Andrei decided to dedicate his life to volleyball. As it often happens with shorter players, he could have been rejected by sports schools. After an initial rejection, the 158cm boy tried another section, where they decided to take Machenko. Clearly, Machenko was taken as a libro because of his short stature. However, the player always believed he deserved more. He got more emotions from scoring points in attack. So, during training, the future outside hitter regularly attacked. As of the video's release, Andre plays for Shakhtar, his only professional club, which he has been with since 2015. True, there were times when Marchenko might have left the team from Soligorsk due to a lack of playing time. There were options to continue his career in Portugal, but the club did not let him go. And how then did the volleyball player become an outside hitter? To realize his ambitions in attack, Marchenko often participated in beach volleyball competitions where he succeeded even at the national level. As I said earlier, Andre consistently attacked during training. It seems that after so many years, the head coach decided to give the young player a chance and put him in as an outside hitter in the match against Energia. Although the beginning of that meeting turned out to be extremely unsuccessful for the Russian, he was able to get into the game and help Schechter secure an important away victory. Since then, he has regularly been included in the lineup as an outside hitter. And in the next season, he secured his spot in the starting lineup. This position change was so successful that after one season, he was able to win the MVP titles of the championship and the Belarus Cup, becoming the best two times in a row in the cup. And so, the native of Chernigovka has won eight consecutive championships of the Republic of Belarus, six cups and also five Super Cups of the country. In the Russian Super League, Marchenko burst in so confidently that at his height of 182 cm, he entered the top 15 most productive players of the championship and in the plus-minus system he was even in 6th place. What's more surprising, Andrei scored 46 points on the block in the current regular season, which allowed him to enter the top 25 in this indicator. Only one outside hitter ranked higher than him, Denis Biryukov. All the other players are central blockers. It was logical to see Marchenko among the best receivers, but the outside hitter fell out of this top in the second half of the championship. Undoubtedly, to successfully attack and block, you must have an outstanding jump. And since we are talking about such a player today, it means he has it. The current maximum touch point for the volleyball player is at 345cm, which gives him about 110cm of vertical jump. You might wonder how Marchenko achieved such results. Genetics play a significant role in this, as his father was heavily involved in high jumping. And Andrei developed his jump after the main volleyball training. Guys performed frog jumps across the court in 6-7 series. They also used jumps on a box and jumps over barriers, nothing special. 
Personally, I don't really like such methods because they seem somewhat spartan to me. Only a few people can adequately handle such a load. More often, it leads to fatigue and injuries, rather than a high jump. But again, as I believe, there is no single correct scheme for increasing the jump. Everything is strictly individual. The main thing is to work hard and find the method that suits you for progress. And finally, let's run through Marchenko's life of the volleyball court. Andre recently got married. The outside hitter of Shakhtar met his future wife on social media. It was Marchenko who helped his future spouse become the press attaché of Shakhtar. And as the player himself admits, he asks Alessia, his wife, not to attract too much attention to her person on the club's social media, so no one would think that Andre is being specially promoted. Although Machenko was long fascinated by football, he now does not follow it as actively, only watching some super matches in the Champions League, especially if Real Madrid is playing. Andre is much more impressed by fishing, and this is probably his favorite activity during the vacation period. And now let's move on to the analytical part, for which many of you probably turned on this video. This time, let's start the analysis with various tendencies in attack, rather than detailing the technical elements, but we will definitely return to this part later. It's worth noting that Marchenko fully unfolds in the system. He is not a typical outside hitter, and it's not just about height. For such a short player to succeed in a power championship, a specific game scheme must be built around him. The merit of the setter of Shakhtar should not go unnoticed. After several seasons spent together, the players already feel each other so well that they can manage without various signals. And Kurash, a longtime partner of Marchenko, already understands where to give a quick pass and where a very quick one. And yes, you understood correctly. With such anthropometry, it's quite difficult to count on successful play in attack against gigantic blockers in the Super League, unless you just do everything faster than they can think. So yes, in the case of the outside hitter, their combinations are carried out at really high speed. And here lies the untypical style of play of Shakhtar. While most teams use outside hitters in tough situations on hit balls, in the collective from Soligorsk, Marchenko will be one of the first options to be used with a good reception. And if compared with Riccini, who also plays at a very high professional level, even without impressive dimensions, the Italian is not the basis of his team's attack, which gives him a bit more space on the net, while more close observation and blocking attention are paid to the Russian. Machenko unusually often attacks along the line, especially in the fourth zone. This is his strong direction, and if he is not given enough interference for such hits, he can exploit the line for as long as possible. And this is quite logical, it's easier to find contact with the hands and play the block out, and there are fewer chances to get under a huge and effective block, but technically such hits are more complex, so everything happens on the edge of risk. Therefore, the most difficult matches for Andre fall on teams from the top part of the tournament table, where not only the analytical department works perfectly, but there are also sizable diagonal players against whom it is extremely difficult to play. Certainly, a quality run-up decides a lot. If the outside hitter managed to pull back and come out in position, not only will he be able to jump better due to the gained run-up, but he will also be better able to see what's happening on the opponent's court, which is undoubtedly important for such a player. Because if Marchenko has to hit without a run-up, especially on a group block, then in such situations the player experiences colossal problems, which are practically impossible to solve. And honestly, it's rare for a short outside hitter to beat a triple block, even with a successful and convenient run-up. There are situations where Andre attacks from the second zone, but there everything looks much heavier, which once again tells us that suitable dimensions are very important for a diagonal or at least the ability to attack with the left hand. For a short right-hander, often not even a crazy jump will help be maximally effective. And it would be strange if there were no place for a pipe in such a dynamic game of Shakhtar. Here I will just note that Marchenko is more effective when he attacks to the right from himself. I don't know what was in previous seasons in the Belarusian Championship, but in Russia, the left side of the court is very difficult for the outside hitter when attacking from the back line. From the matches I watched, he quite often made mistakes when choosing such a direction. 
After the general analysis, now let's move on to a more detailed breakdown of the technique. And let's start with getting into position. This part of the attack, which is too little attention paid at the amateur level and occasionally at the professional level. As I noted earlier, it's very important for Machenko to have good conditions for the run-up. So you will almost never see the outside hitter being lazy and not pulling back before the attack. These are indeed rare shots, and even if Andre will be positioning for a triple block, he will still do everything possible to take a convenient position for the attack. If trying to draw some analogies, then we can compare the run-up technique of the outside hitter with Yuji Nishida, who also maximally effectively uses this element. Marchenko calmly gains starting speed and then quickly and powerfully explodes during the last three steps, performing the penultimate step around the 3 meter line. Such an approach to the run-up allows Andre to generate excellent speed, from which he then forms a high jump. A significant addition is given by the fast and wide work of the hands. Many begin to bring out the elbow of the hitting hand a bit earlier, but the Russian maximally uses the opportunities for gaining height. At the moment of pushing off, the body is often directed to the opposite corner of the court, so that it is possible to attack in a diagonal direction, make a transfer of the ball along the line, but at the same time not revealing his intentions to the blocking and defending players of the opponent. The free hand is above until the beginning of the hitting movement, the body is turned, and the chest section is maximally stretched. This also allows maximizing the body's capabilities to increase the power of the hit and Marchenko secures his hit due to the strong inclusion of the abdominal muscles in the work. And to increase the maximum lift point and the power of the attack, the player tilts the body, which often leads to landing on one leg, but personally I don't see anything terrible in this. I still don't understand why many demonize this moment, it's quite difficult to land exactly on two legs in such an unstable sport as volleyball. As I said earlier, Marchenko at his height of 182cm is quite a formidable and aggressive blocker. His statistics beautifully testify to this. Unlike many short players, Andre can jump to a sufficient height even without an amplitude run up, and sometimes even from a place. But considering some insane speed of the outside hitter's movement along the net, as well as lightning fast decision making, he is almost always ready not only to fully work on the block in his zone, but also to help organize a triple block. And what's most terrifying is that Marchenko jumps so high that not only can he confidently transfer his hands to the opponent's side and reduce the distance to the ball, but he also manages to wave his hands in the air, trying to mislead the attacking players of the opponent. Some kind of madness. On the survey, the outside hitter also likes to play on the opponent's nerves. And for this, he uses his technical arsenal to the maximum. Let's start with the fact that Marchenko uses a hybrid serve. That is, it's a short toss after which a powerful serve can follow, as well as a floating one, which puts the final choice of position in reception for the opponent in doubt. And Andre gladly uses this. He can pull the opponent's receivers closer to the net due to the floating serve, and then catch them off guard with a powerful one. This works in the opposite direction. Having moved the opponent's receiving line back, Marchenko can surprise them with a shortened floating serve. At the same time, the outside hitter can intentionally change the direction of the toss to also confuse the opponent. It adds to their headache and the choice of the direction of the serve. Most often, Marchenko tries to find the seams between players, so that they spend time deciding who will play the ball. and sometimes he can use the exit of the setter from the back line to create confusion in the opponent's camp. And it's kind of strange, but I decided to tell about the ritual before the serve at the end. The player tries to receive the ball 2 to 3 meters from the sideline in the first zone. Next, he puts his right foot on the toe and with this begins the rotation of the ball, after which he presses it to his chest slightly closer to the chin, takes a breath and heads to the place of execution of the serve. There, Marchenko first spins the ball in both hands, then with the beginning of the movement, spins the ball in the right hitting hand and already performs the toss and produces a hit on the ball. Let's move on to yet another pair of integral elements for the outside hitter, such as reception and defense. Undoubtedly Andrei has his ritual before receiving the serve. Part of the elements in it are mandatory, part are not. What Marchenko does as a mandatory part is the imitation of reception and a slight forward movement.
and then we'll discuss the non-mandatory part. The player can wipe his hands on his feet, but this is most likely related to how much the outside hitter has sweated. Also, sometimes you can meet hip swaying to the right side. And even shoulder swaying, as does Eric Shoji. And all these habits he still has from the time of playing as a libero. The setting of the feet on reception depends on the server. If there will be a floating serve, then the feet will stand narrower than during a powerful serve, to be more mobile. Hands before the toss of the ball are on the hips. During contact with the ball, the chest section is relaxed. The shoulders are maximally extended forward to provide the largest and most mobile platform for reception. In defense, Marchenko also uses his insane speed and lightning fast reaction, which allows him to make quick decisions and save not the most obvious balls. Therefore, as a former libero, Andre gives room for creativity on the court, although he has standard positions that he occupies in defense. Let's talk about them now. When there is an attack by the centers, Marchenko remains in the center of the court and very often shifts to the left from himself. When an attack occurs from the fourth zone of the opponent and Andre is on the back line, then here he pulls back further and controls the diagonal direction and rebounds from the block more. It often happens that the outside hitter may find himself in defense in the fifth zone. Here he acts more aggressively, going closer and deeper into the court. In defense from attacks from the second and first zones, everything is approximately similar to the situation in the fourth. But in this case, Machenko is closer to the center. And if it comes to defense in the fourth zone, then the outside hitter occupies a position near the 3 meter line in his zone, not only to react to direct attacks, but also to tricky tips from the opponent over the block. I really hope that such a volleyball player as Marchenko can break the paradigm of Russian selectors, and they will consider the possibility of using less tall but more technical volleyball players. Although, unfortunately, it's hard to believe in this. But we cannot cancel the fact that such an example gives, albeit tiny, opportunities to dream that if it worked out for Marchenko, then it might work out for you. But it's important to understand that if Andre had not played for a Belarusian club, but had stayed and tried to engage in volleyball in Russia, then I am sure that we would not see him in the Super League. Sorry for my skepticism. So, it's good that everything turned out exactly as it did, and we can watch such a phenomenon, who not only tells us that you don't have to be a 2 meter giant to be successful in the Russian Super League, but also that team structure and system are a more important factor, rather than just having cool performers. I've done a huge amount of work on this analysis, so at least I expect a like under this video and subscriptions to the channel. And also, don't forget to write who you would like to see next in this segment. Your opinion is a priority in choosing the next hero. And as usual, this was Nick. Love what you do and you will definitely succeed. See you soon. Bye.